Welcome to the Bible Quiz. Today, we're diving back into the book of Genesis with part two. Think you know all the details of these ancient stories. Get ready to be challenged as we explore more puzzling events, fascinating characters, and profound teachings from the first book of the Bible. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button to support our mission of spreading God's word. We'd love to hear your thoughts, so share your scores and suggestions in the comments below. Let's jump in and see how well you really know Genesis. Let's get started. Question 1. What happened to Lot's wife? A. She fell into a river. B. She fled to the mountains. C. She turned into a pillar of salt. D. She was swallowed by the earth. You get 10 seconds. That's C. She turned into a pillar of salt. Lot's wife, despite being warned not to look back as they fled Sodom, disobeyed God's command and was turned into a pillar of salt. This event serves as a powerful lesson about obedience and the consequences of turning back to sin or the past when God leads us to a new beginning. Genesis chapter 19, verse 26. Question 2. What sin did God tell King Abimelech he had committed? A. Lying B. Idol worship C. Stealing livestock D. Taking another man's wife You get 10 seconds. That's D, taking another man's wife. King Abimelech, believing Sarah was Abraham's sister, unknowingly took her into his household. In a dream, God revealed that he had taken another man's wife, which was a sin, even though Abimelech had acted innocently. God's warning to Abimelech demonstrated his protection over Abraham and Sarah. Abimelech quickly restored Sarah to Abraham, showing his obedience to God's command. Genesis chapter 20 verses 3 to 7. Question 3. What did Abraham name his son which Sarah gave birth to? A. Isaac. B. Esau. C. Jacob. D. Ishmael. You get 10 seconds. That's A, Isaac. Abraham named his son Isaac, which means laughter, as Sarah laughed when she first heard that she would bear a child in her old age. Isaac's birth was the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham and Sarah, marking a pivotal moment in the unfolding of God's covenant with Abraham's descendants. Genesis chapter 21, verse 3. Question 4. What did God instruct Abraham to do to Isaac on Moriah? A. Bless him. B. Anoint him. C. Sacrifice him. D. Send him away. You get 10 seconds. That's C, sacrifice him. God instructed Abraham to sacrifice Isaac on Mount Moriah. This was a test of Abraham's faith and obedience. As he was about to do so, an angel stopped him, and God provided a substitute sacrifice, demonstrating God's provision and Abraham's unwavering faith. Genesis chapter 22, verses 2 to 13. 
Question 5. What did Abraham find in the thicket after the angel stopped him? A. A ram. B. A goat. C. A lamb. D. A dove. You get 10 seconds. That's A, a ram. This ram became the substitute sacrifice signifying God's provision and mercy. The event is a powerful foreshadowing of substitutionary atonement, where God provides a sacrifice in place of what was asked. Abraham named the place, the Lord will provide. Genesis chapter 22 verses 13 to 14. Ensure you stay connected with us by subscribing. You won't want to miss the awesome quizzes and content we have in store for you. Question 6. When Sarah died, what did Abraham ask the sons of Heth for? A. Water B. Livestock C. A blessing D. Land to bury her You get 10 seconds. That's D, land to bury her. Upon Sarah's death, Abraham asked the sons of Heth for a burial site, requesting the cave of Machpelah. As a foreigner, he sought to honor Sarah with a proper burial. This marked his first acquisition of land in Canaan, fulfilling part of God's promise to him. Genesis chapter 23, verses 3 to 4, verse 9. Question 7. What did Abraham send his servant to the land of his kindred to get? A. Livestock B. A wife for Isaac C. Gold D. A blessing You get 10 seconds. That's B, a wife for Isaac. Abraham sent his servant to his homeland to find a wife for his son, Isaac. This mission was crucial as Abraham wanted to ensure that Isaac's wife came from his own people, reflecting a desire to maintain both faith and familial lineage. The servant's journey and success in finding Rebekah demonstrated God's guidance and faithfulness to Abraham's family. Genesis chapter 24, verses 3 to 4. Question 8. How did the servant know Rebecca was the right one when he asked her for a drink? A. She gave him food. B. She gave him a gift. C. She invited him to her house. D. She offered water for him and his camels. You get 10 seconds. That's D. She offered water for him and his camels. The servant knew Rebecca was the chosen one for Isaac when she not only offered him water but also volunteered to water his camels. Genesis chapter 24 verses 14 to 19. This act of kindness and hospitality was the sign the servant had prayed for, confirming that she was the one appointed by God for Isaac. Her generosity and diligence marked her as a fitting wife for Abraham's son. Question 9. What did Jacob put on his hands to deceive Isaac? A. Mud B. Goatskins C. Wool D. Cloth You get 10 seconds.
That's B, goat skins. Jacob put goat skins on his hands and neck to deceive his blind father, Isaac, into thinking he was his hairy brother, Esau. This deception allowed Jacob to receive the blessing intended for Esau, fulfilling God's plan but also causing tension between the brothers. The act illustrates the lengths Jacob went to in order to secure the birthright and blessing. Genesis chapter 27 verses 15 to 23. Question 10. What did Jacob use for a pillow? A. A sack. B. His cloak. C. A stone. D. A blanket. You get 10 seconds. That's C, a stone. While fleeing from Esau, Jacob used a stone for a pillow when he stopped to rest at Bethel. That night, he dreamed of a ladder reaching to heaven with angels ascending and descending on it. This vision marked the place as sacred and reaffirmed God's covenant with him, leading Jacob to name the site Bethel, meaning house of God. Genesis chapter 28 verses 11 to 12. Question 11. What part of Jacob's body was touched and put out of joint? A. His hip. B. His arm. C. His knee. D. His shoulder. You get 10 seconds. That's A, his hip. During a night-long struggle with a divine figure, Jacob's hip was touched and dislocated. This encounter left Jacob with a limp, serving as a physical reminder of his perseverance and his transformation into Israel, the one who wrestles with God. The incident is significant as it reflects both Jacob's strength and vulnerability. Genesis chapter 32, verses 24 to 32. Question 12. How many times did Jacob bow before his brother? A. 2 B. 3 C. 5 D. 7 You get 10 seconds. That's D, seven. Jacob bowed seven times before his brother Esau as they reunited after years of separation. Genesis chapter 33, verse three. This act of humility and submission was Jacob's way of seeking reconciliation, fearing that Esau still held a grudge over the stolen blessing. The gesture paved the way for forgiveness and a peaceful reunion. Question 13. What were the names of Dinah's brothers? A. Aaron and Levi B. Levi and Simeon C. Hammer and Aaron D. Simeon and Hammer You get 10 seconds. That's B, Levi and Simeon. Dinah's brothers were Simeon and Levi, the sons of Jacob and Leah. After Shechem, a Hivite prince, dishonored Dinah, her brothers Simeon and Levi took matters into their own hands by deceiving the men of Shechem and ultimately attacking the city in retaliation. Their actions reflect the protective and, at times, violent nature of family loyalty in Genesis. Genesis chapter 34, verse 25. Question 14. What condition did Jacob's sons give Hammer for allowing intermarriage with his people? A. 
a peace treaty. B, a payment of gold. C, a feast in their honor. D, all the men must be circumcised. You get 10 seconds. That's D. All the men must be circumcised. Jacob's sons, particularly Simeon and Levi, told Hammer that all the males of his city must be circumcised if they wanted to intermarry with Jacob's family. This demand was made under the pretense of joining their people together. But in reality, it was part of their plan to weaken the men of Shechem and exact revenge for Dinah's violation. Genesis chapter 34, verses 13 to 17. Question 15. Who was Rachel and Jacob's first child? A. Levi B. Joseph C. Reuben D. Benjamin You get 10 seconds. That's B, Joseph. Rachel's first child with Jacob was Joseph. He was born after many years of Rachel being barren, and his birth brought great joy to both Rachel and Jacob. Joseph would later become one of the most significant figures in Genesis, playing a pivotal role in God's plan for the Israelites. Genesis chapter 30, verses 22 to 24. Question 16. Who tried to tempt Joseph to lie with her? A, his sister. B, a servant girl. C, Potiphar's wife. D, Pharaoh's daughter. You get 10 seconds. That's C, Potiphar's wife. Potiphar's wife tried to seduce Joseph while he was serving in her household. Despite her repeated attempts, Joseph refused to dishonor both his master and God by committing adultery. This act of righteousness led to false accusations and Joseph's imprisonment, but it also set the stage for his eventual rise to power in Egypt. Genesis chapter 39, verses 7 to 12. Question 17. When Joseph fled, what did he leave behind? A. His staff. B. His ring. C. His cloak. D. His sandals. You get 10 seconds. That's C, his cloak. When Potiphar's wife tried to seduce Joseph and grabbed hold of his cloak, Joseph fled from the situation, leaving his cloak behind in her hands. This cloak was later used by Potiphar's wife to falsely accuse Joseph of attempting to assault her, leading to his unjust imprisonment. Genesis chapter 39, verses 12 to 13. Question 18. What did Joseph say the butler's dream meant? A. He'd be restored. B. He'd lose his job. C. He'd gain wealth. D. He'd be executed. You get 10 seconds. That's A. He'd be restored. Joseph interpreted the butler's dream to mean that within three days, the butler would be restored to his position serving Pharaoh. The dream involved three branches, 
which Joseph explained symbolized the three days after which the butler would again be pouring wine into Pharaoh's cup. This accurate interpretation later paved the way for Joseph's eventual release from prison. Genesis chapter 40 verses 9 to 13. Question 19. What did Joseph instruct Pharaoh to do after interpreting his dream? A. Build more cities. B. Expand the army. C. Release the prisoners. D. Store food for the famine. You get 10 seconds. That's D, store food for the famine. After interpreting Pharaoh's dream, which predicted seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine, Joseph advised Pharaoh to store grain during the years of abundance. This wise counsel not only saved Egypt, but also led to Joseph being appointed as second in command. Genesis chapter 41 verses 33 to 36. Question 20. Who went to Egypt to buy corn and did not recognize Joseph? A. Canaanite farmers. B. Joseph's brothers. C. Pharaoh's servants. D. Egyptian merchants. You get 10 seconds. That's B, Joseph's brothers. Joseph's brothers went to Egypt to buy corn during the famine, but they did not recognize him when they appeared before him. Joseph, who was now the governor of Egypt, recognized his brothers immediately but concealed his identity. This encounter marked the beginning of a series of tests Joseph put his brothers through. Genesis chapter 42 verses 6 to 8. Stay with us until the end of the video to see how many Bible quiz questions you got right. Don't forget to note your score and share it with us in the comments section. Let's explore and learn more about the Bible with these fun and interesting questions. Question 21. What did Joseph command his servant to put in one man's sack? A. A cup. B. Gold. C. Silver. D. A scroll. You get 10 seconds. That's A. A cup. This was part of a plan to test his brother's loyalty and repentance. When the cup was later found, it led to a dramatic confrontation where Judah offered himself in Benjamin's place, showing the brothers had changed since they had sold Joseph into slavery years earlier. Genesis chapter 44, verses 1 to 12. Question 22. What did Israel say when he saw the wagons? A. I am satisfied. B. The journey is long. C. I will go to see Joseph. D. This is a great blessing. You get 10 seconds. That's C. I will go to see Joseph. When Israel, Jacob, saw the wagons Joseph had sent to transport him to Egypt, he said, My son Joseph is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. This moment marked a turning point for Jacob, who had believed Joseph to be dead for many years. The sight of the wagon symbolized hope and reunion for Jacob and his family. Genesis chapter 45 verses 27 to 28. Question 23. 
In what land did Joseph tell Pharaoh his family was in? A. Egypt B. Midian C. Canaan D. Goshen You get 10 seconds. That's D, Goshen. Joseph told Pharaoh that his family was in the land of Goshen. This land, located in Egypt, was given to Joseph's family to live in and pasture their flocks. It became a place of safety and provision for the Israelites during the famine, as well as a significant location in their eventual history. Genesis chapter 47, verses 1 to 6. Question 24. When blessing Joseph's sons, what did Israel lay his left hand on? A. Manasseh B. Benjamin C. Ephraim D. Judah You get 10 seconds. That's A, Manasseh. When blessing Joseph's sons, Israel placed his left hand on Manasseh, the elder son, and his right hand on Ephraim, the younger. Despite Joseph's objection, Jacob deliberately crossed his hands, giving the greater blessing to Ephraim. This act signified that the younger would surpass the elder in significance, demonstrating that God's blessings are not bound by human traditions. Genesis chapter 48 verses 13 to 19. Question 25. What did Joseph say to his brothers about the evil they did to him? A. You must leave Egypt. B. God turned it into good. C. I will never forgive you. D. You deserve punishment. You get 10 seconds. That's B, God turned it into good. Joseph reassured his brothers saying, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. Genesis chapter 50 verse 20. Despite their betrayal, Joseph forgave his brothers and recognized that God had used their actions to save many lives by positioning him in Egypt during the famine. This statement reflects Joseph's deep understanding of God's sovereignty and purpose in all things. Well done! You've reached the end of part two of the book of Genesis. Whether you answered them all or learned something new, we hope this quiz deepened your understanding of Genesis. The journey through God's Word is always full of surprises and wisdom. If you enjoyed this quiz, give the video a thumbs up and share it with others to spread the joy of learning the Bible. Don't forget to hit subscribe for more fun and challenging quizzes on the scriptures. Thanks for joining us, and may God bless your continued exploration of His Word. See you in the next quiz.